time to finally cash in and get that miracle seed. Um, I'm not going to attach it to Servine. I'm, I'm just going to wait until I get my Petulil and I'm going to give it to Ben. Uh, something to note, though, is that if you lie about the starter you picked, uh, you're going to get the item corresponding to the starter you told her you got. So, for example, if I chose Oshawott, not at the beginning, but in uh, her choices of answers, I would have gotten uh, the um, Mystic Water instead. And uh, it, I, I'll, I'll throw it out there. If I didn't intend on raising a Lilligant, I wouldn't have uh, said I picked Snivy. I would have uh, I would have gone for Oshawott instead because I do intend on raising a Jellicent later on, and the Mystic Water uh, would come in handy. Oh, and apparently John Lennon lives in Nacreen City. So this is what the afterlife is like, apparently. Well, it sort of makes sense because Unova's cities are named after clouds. And, uh, nah, nah, but if a Pokemon dreams, I cannot even imagine how it is. Oh, I can tell you all right. It's all about playing the same shitty mini games over and over and over to try and get Pokemon with rare abilities that change that uh, range from absolutely dismal to exceptional, but yeah, overall, yeah, it's just bad. By the way, do not attempt to enter the gym just yet. The reason why will become apparent when we actually try to do so, but I'm not going to do so right now. And uh, you can talk to this guy and add some accordions to uh, the music. Uh, here we have a cafe. Uh, I don't think there's anything to do here other than talk to all these people. When you battle with a friend using wireless communications, you can use items using a Wonder Launcher. The Wonder Launcher! This is another one of the new types of battling that was introduced in this game alongside, alongside the triple and rotation battles. The way it works is that you gain one point uh, in each turn and you can use up these points in order to use items. Of course, the best ones like Max Revives and stuff are very expensive, so it's all about using those uh, points strategically. Um, also, something that uh, I should note uh, about the Wonder Launcher is that uh, you can get some items that don't exist in the rest of the game. For example, you can get, uh, for example, the you know the X items. You can get some of these items that will raise uh, the the corresponding stat by two, three, or even six levels. Of course, you can't get that in the main game because that would be totally broken. Um, though I don't know, maybe it's one of the functions of uh, the Join Avenue in uh, Black and White 2. I guess I should do my research before coming on because the Join Avenue does all kinds of incredible things you would have never thought possible. I don't remember exactly all of the things, but whatever. I just got the, the Rock Smash TM which I believe Drillbur can learn, and uh, we get this TM at a point in the game where it can still be somewhat useful. So, let's go with Rock Smash, and can Drillbur learn it? Yes, I remembered right. So, I guess I'm going to be getting rid of um, Mud Slap, because I don't plan on using it all that much. You know, a special move on Drillbur, yeah, it's pretty much a bad idea. So, uh, moving on, we have, um, Pinwheel Forest. Did you remember to pack an antidote? Yeah, when that is the, is the slogan of the place, uh, you know that there's trouble waiting inside. Um, yeah, Pinwheel Forest, the way it, uh, the way it works is that there's one path that leads straight to the exit, and there's another path that's a maze. Of course, we're going to be exploring both. And we can't enter Pinwheel Forest itself right now because there's a blockade of, uh, of Team Plasma members, which of course means that we're going to have to fight them later on when we finally get access to this place. We are in the right! Everyone else is wrong! If you don't think the same way we think, we'll use all our power to eliminate you. Um, they are starting to sound less like PETA and more like freaking Al-Qaeda. Um, now, introduction to a new type of trainer, doctors and nurses. Um, some of them, sometimes, at, le at least uh, I know one in the Nimbasa Stadium that uh, has um, an Audino, but this one has a Muna. But uh, yeah, the when you encounter trainers with Audinos, usually it's going to be do doctors and nurses, not to say that they all have Audinos. But nonetheless, what's cool about the these trainers is that once you defeat them, they are going to heal you whenever you talk to them. 
which is quite useful in d dungeons that are incredibly long with really high encounter rates, such as Charge Stone Cave, but here it's really uncalled for because they place that nerves before you step in any tall grass. I mean, really? From here, it's really easy to go back to Necreen City. She would have been a lot more useful uh, a bit uh, later on in this area. Anyway, this area is also labeled as Pinwheel Forest, but we're actually on the outskirts of the forest. I saw the item there before, it's a nether. Could be useful in some of those areas like Charge Stone Cave and uh, Route 17 that drag on and on and on. And uh, so we're going to be fighting a few trainers, which gives me an opportunity to talk about the new Pokémon that can be found in this place. Uh, first, the thing you want to watch out for the most when encountering wild Pokémon on this route is it's the fact that uh, there are two new Pokémon that are sort of counterparts to Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan, sort of. These are Throw and Sock. The way these, uh, these Pokémon work is that and they start off really, really strong, but since they don't evolve, they gradually fade away over the course of the game. So if you really want to dominate the early game, feel free to catch one of these. But uh, I really don't recommend that, because usually it's uh, a lot more worth it to focus on the late game instead. Um, and uh, as a result, what this means is that, um, as I said before, they're really strong early on, and their stats are far higher than anything we've encountered yet. And oh, great, I'm gonna fall asleep. Now, switching out isn't really that much of an option, because, um, as I said before, if you switch out, the sleep counter is reset, so uh, you don't want to waste any more turns sleeping than you have to. So, hopefully he wakes up. WAKE UP, DRILLBUR! Just because I have trouble waking up in the morning doesn't mean you should emulate me at any and all costs. And right now I'm being murked by Leech Seed. It's healing like hell and I can't do anything because that lazy ass Drillbur is still asleep! Come on! Wake up! Petty Lil's all it's already back at over half health. Wake up! Thank you! Here we go, critical hit. I don't know if I would have been able to uh, defeat it without it, but hey, I'm not complaining about what happened uh, at the Elite Four in the last LP. <laughs> Cri timely criticals have to occur in bo uh, on both sides sometimes, I guess. So as I was saying, uh, throw and sock, since they're so much stronger than anything we've encountered thus far in the game, uh, you really want to be extremely careful when facing them in the wild because you can potentially get your asses kicked by a wild Pokémon. And trust me, that's not funny when it happens. Yes, I know Throw is a bad Hariyama and Sock is a bad Mian Shao, but at this point in the game, imagine, imagine it's, it's not quite like encountering these two fully evolved Pokémon at that point in the game. But it's still somewhat close to it because they have base stat totals of, I don't remember the exact number and I don't want you to, to tell me either, but it's around 500. Whereas uh, so far we've met mostly stuff um, around 250 uh, to 400, so 500 is really a lot. Uh, other Pokémon we can encounter on this route, Timber, which is the counterpart to uh, Machop, of course. Uh, I really like uh, this line's designs for some reason. It's it, it, it's like it's it's funny and creative, I'd say. They're, they're, it's a, it's an evolutionary line of construction workers, and uh, I sort of like them. It's sort of it's sort of wacky, but not so wacky that it's, that it's ridiculous or something. But uh, as I was saying, it evolves into a Conkeldur, which is of course the counterpart to Machamp. It's it's stronger than Machamp, bulkier than Machamp, it's a bit slower than Machamp though, though but otherwise it's a superior Pokémon all around. Of course it doesn't have no guard, but it doesn't really need no guard. It has a Guts, which is really useful. Its Dream World ability is Iron Fist, which as of this video uh, being made, 
hasn't been discovered in the dream world yet, though that could happen any time now, because we're still uh, finding out new Pokémon in the dream world in Black and White 2. Crocodile and uh, Haxorus were found no later than yesterday. But yeah, overall, very strong Pokémon, very powerful, very bulky, just a bit a bit slow, that's its only real weakness. Of course, it's it may be sort of a deal-breaker to some people in-game, including me, which is why I decided on using Yan Shao instead. But uh, nonetheless, Conkeldur, very strong Pokémon, if you're playing against a human being, you won't regret using it, it's definitely one of the best fighting types out there. And the final Pokémon for this area, one we have just fought, Timpole, which evolves into Seismitoad. The main problem with Seismitoad... Actually, there are a few problems with Seismitoad. It's that its stat spread on... It, it doesn't really make it um, useful for something. Of course, it has high HP, so it's sort of bulky. It's got average attacks, average speed. It's just... Um, not very memorable. It's sort of a better rounded version of a Gastrodon, but um, th but uh, usually in Pokemon, unless your stat total is really high, being well rounded is usually going to be a disadvantage because of the of the way the game mechanics work. And the, another big problem with the Seismitoad is that it can't learn Waterfall and it can't learn Ice Beam and Water types that cannot learn one of those two moves are very, very rare. There are a few that can't learn Waterfall, like for example Kingler, but at least it learns a uh, Crab Hammer to compensate. Uh, Seismito doesn't have that luxury. As far as I know, it's, al it's also the only water type alongside Keldeo that can't learn uh, Ice Beam, and uh, Drillbur wants to learn Home Claws. Well, hey, why not? I'm gonna get rid of Fury Swipe since I wasn't planning on using it much anyway. Home Claws is definitely going to be a lot more useful. And to make things worse, it's in the same typing as Quagsire, Gastrodon, and Swampert, all of whom have a certain appeal for doing certain t t things, whereas Seismitoad just cannot. So that was a quick rundown of the Pokémon we can find in Pinwheel Forest, and hey, a bit of! This is one of the two Pokémon that I wanted to catch, um, not, to, not for use on my team, you're going to see why later on, but for now, let's just weaken it. Okay, I'm not gonna try another Metal Claw that might kill it, so I'm gonna go for the slightly weaker Rock Smash instead. Here we go, it should stay alive in the red, right where I want it, so... Let's throw a Pokemon. Oh shit! I forgot to look at the gender. I wanted a male one, and I want, and I forgot to look at the gender. Oh my god! What a fail! I cannot believe what I just did. See, that's the problem with let's playing. Sometimes your attention is divided between commentating and playing. And I remembered that I wanted a pit of and a timber, but for some stupid, stupid reason. I forgot that I wanted a pit of for breeding purposes, and thus I wanted a male one, but I ended up catching a female one. Wow! What a mountain of fail! And here's a timber, the other thing that I wanted to catch here. Here, the gender is not important, I just wanted a fighting type that I could catch easily without getting my ass kicked, so that leaves a uh, throw and sock out, I guess. There was something else that I forgot to say about throw and sock, but... I guess at this point I'm gonna run out of time before then, so I'm just going to uh, keep it for the next video. Um, so now, Timber's in the red after two Metal Claws. Is one Pokeball going to be enough? One! Two! Three! Here we go! Timber was caught very easily. I checked its a catch rate earlier on. 180. Really, really high, so there should be no reason why you should struggle to catch one, especially when it's in the red. So next time, I'm going to keep exploring this area and hopefully make amends for the gigantic fail that you just saw.